home. Right, let's have a look at this uh, diagnostics system that we have been sent. So, to preface, uh, Extol, Extol, I don't know if I have to do the X, but Extol uh, contacted us after we did the review of the other diagnostic machine and said, can we send you a diagnostic machine for you to review? I said yes. Well, eventually I said yes, because uh, they sent the link and I looked at it on the internet. I'm going to put it on the screen for you just now. I saw that looks like just another uh, diagnostic machine. I've got one. I don't see another reason why I would need another one. And then I saw the most important part. Bi-directional. Bi-directional. That is the bit that you chaps and chap S's were asking for, was a diagnostic machine that does bi-directional, which is the actuation of actuators on the car, which this one does. So this one comes in a nice plastic box. Thank goodness, because uh, the other ones don't. They didn't come in a box. They didn't come in a nice plastic, no, no, a hard, a hard shell. At least this is, uh, it's David proof. I can do what I usually do and throw it in the back of the truck and I can swim about in the back of a pickup bed. Don't do that with your tools, folks. Don't, don't, don't be me. Don't be me. So, uh, what you get in your box is, oh, the diagnostic machine itself. I should say we're just going to look at it in here and then head out to the pickup and plug it in. Uh, diagnostic machine, and um, it's wired, this one. This one is a wired connection. And it came with, well, wire, the OBD plug for plugging in your thing. Some USB cables. In this slot was various USB charging adapters, but none were a UK plug, so that was a bit of a downer there. Not to worry, because as I said, it's... Uh, USB charged, where is it? So that's your port for connecting the OBD cable. That's your USB charger. Now it's a micro USB. I would have expected USB-C on a 2022 version, but yeah, micro USB still works. It's a, well, it's a fairly rugged, it's a nice hard, hard oh, of course it's hard, it's aluminium. What I meant to say, it's a nice metal framed uh, aluminium thing. It's uh, mostly just a big fancy Android tablet. It's got your, we'll go into the, the diagnostic part later, but it's got like an actual fully fledged uh, Chrome browser in it, which is nice for googling all those problems. Your user stuff like you can screen, take screenshots of the screen and whatnot and all those other things and record the screen and things like that. And the main diagnostic bit that does all the diagnostic, like your special functions, obviously that's your key programming, electric seat thing in, all the brake reset, all the, you know, the usual 26 plus reset and things and the oil reset and all that kind of stuff. The bi-directional stuff is actually, well, it's vehicle specific, obviously you need to go into the vehicle that you're in and then you can turn things on and off. Uh, I was going to say the updates, but as someone else, uh, the commenter left, the continual stream of updates, it's basically got updates all the time. This one won't have because I just updated it before I started the video. And also, I don't think I'm on the workshop's Wi-Fi in here. I am not on the workshop's Wi-Fi. That's why it's very slow. It's still trying to connect to the house miles away. But, right, lots of updates. There are lots of bits to faff with. We are definitely in English. We are working in metric. We've got... Uh, no, the firmware is part of the updates setting that it looks at. All the other doodads. Uh, there is instructions. Uh, I haven't read them because, well, what is it to read? Press the diagnostics and away you go. So with that, the important part, let's head out to the pickup then and uh, plug it in and see what it does. Ah, I should mention, uh, yes, it's wired and the other one I've got is wireless and uh, I'm kind of torn. I like the convenience of the wireless OBD adapter. You can just bang it in. But if you're like me and you have a penchant for forgetting to charge your diagnostics, when you plug it in to the OBD connector, it gives it power. So you can literally forget to charge it and then plug it in the OBD port and ta-da! It'll work anyway because you've now got power supplied by the car, which is nice. Right, let's go to the pickup this time. Onwards! Oh, it is not raining, and I am actually almost as surprised as you are that it's not raining. Obviously, I can only show you things 
on this pickup that it can do. I can't show you different detailed vehicle uh, things because I don't have access to all those vehicles. I only have access to a few. So one of these ends is a big end. That goes on the OBD DBD DBD do OBD do nope nope nope. Do not bend your pins, friends. Do not bend your pins. You will not enjoy it. Right, somewhere down here there's an OBD plug. Somewhere down here. Now oh, I'm gonna have to go in manually. Uh. Right. That is in there. And then jam that in the bottom. Oh, the top even. It's the top. Hold on. Also, you're going to need your keys in the ignition for this. With this not being wireless, uh, it's a wire, obviously. It's a pretty short fucking wire, if I'm honest. This, oh, I, you could, I, I would like this to be twice the length it is. Because if you think, if your diagnostic is in this hole, and you have to fish it out through the door and under the bonnet. On this pickup, this is only making that to like nearly that headlight near me. It could do with being a lot longer. So you can be in here with this plugged in and have your diagnostic machine out in the engine bay when you're, well, actuating actuators. So you can test and actuate at the same time. So a longer bit of wire uh, would be uh, on my list of uh, things to make this better. Can, can you see a goddamn thing now? Ah, uh, right. Is that any better? Diagnostics. Back. Let us press the big diagnosis bit. Oh no, no, we could press auto. We'll try auto first. Oh yeah, no, wait. Can I try screen capture? Start capturing screen. Start now. Okay, this might actually work properly then. Auto scan. Auto scan then. Wow, that glare is something awful. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. So this really needs an anti-glare screen. This is this is horrible for me to look at. You really need to be sitting in the dark. Auto scan's working well. I can't remember if this one does pick up. Or the last one picked up pickups. Pick picked up the pickups VIN number from the thing. I can't remember. If it did, it certainly did it faster than this. I can hear it clicking. Mm -hmm. No, VIN number is not. Okay. Oh, I'm not putting it in manually because I don't know where it is in this. It's far away. Let's just go in diagnostic mode. Uh, this is a Toyota. We are in Europe. Uh, automatic detection. It is definitely a Hilux. It is uh, 0705 or 15. Yeah, that one. And it has vehicle stability control. That's that. 1K DFTV pickup option with vehicle stability control. Smashing. Go on then. Do a scan of systems. Oh, that was, that was fast in the scanning. Hmm. Engine. Two. I've got engine failure, it says. Uh, diagnose? Diagnose. Okay. Read trouble code. Stall history of engine. Current stall history. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember stalling it, but sure. Okay. Let's uh, clear them then. Okay. Let's read them out. No trouble codes. Alright, live data. What live data can we get? Misfire. Heated catalyst, right, okay, there's so many th right, okay, you you know what the there we go, let's have cooling temperature was at 42 degrees here, yeah, because it's just running. Air intake 73 degrees. Mm, these are all lies because it's not on at the moment. Right. Okay. We know how all of this works. We can look at all that stuff. We want to see the actuation. Do we want to see the actuation test? The actuation of actuators. So what can we do in this? Activate swirl flaps. Turn the AC on and off. Test the turbocharger. Uh, 
activated the BP DPF regenerator. Right, or, what really? Oh, I suppose this is because we're in the engine side. Right, so if we go back out and we we'll go to like the EBS, we we'll go in there. What actuation test can we do on that? Okay, ah, we can turn lights and the dashboard on and off. Excellent, now it's going to actually show you it doing things. Right. Uh, right, come in here, camera. Come in here, camera boy. Alright, I'm going to go in manually. Alright, zoom out. Okay, so on the right hand side of the dashboard are all of the lights. So I'm going to press brake warning light on the diagnostics. Uh, brake warning light, blah 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 blah, come on and off. Uh, do not want to monitor data list. Brake light is off. Morning brake light is on. Oh, sorry, that's a handbrake one over there. Idiot. Off. On. Off. That's not a very exciting one. We want the ABS warning light. Yes, ABS. Don't want them there. So, it should be over this side. Nope, that's off the other side. Jesus, I will get this right. Off. On. Off. On. See the thing? Right, there must be a fucking traction control once there. Traction control, Jesus Christ. Right, the traction controls are definitely on this side. Light is on. Light is off. Light is on. Light is off. Eh, uh, what was the other big one to do? Really motor, solenoid, really. ABS. Alright, you can turn the ABS solenoids on and off. Really of motor. This vehicle, blah blah blah. That's uh, two to five seconds. Do you want to model this? Right, go. Oh, I can hear it. Oh, it did a thing. It made the noise. So, that totally works. What else is in here? Eh. Egg in. E. 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 I don't know if what. Immobilizer. Actuation tests. What can we actuate with? Security indicator. Oh, this causes the security indicator to blink. Where is the security indicator in this car? Uh, there's a light that flashes somewhere in the dashboard when you do it. Uh, oh no, it's that one. That's the security indicator. It is off. It is on. There it goes, flashing away. Flash, 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 flash. Off. So, actuation of actuators works. We have two way control over some of the things. Like, uh, I know some of you are probably wondering what that's useful for, but let's say you've got a fault with uh, something. Oh, let me just stop that, and I will have to find out where it's recorded it to. Well, we will find it. Ugh, hold on, that's too out. Right. Woo, man, that was uh, that's tough in there. Let's start another one. Right. Start again. But yeah, so you just scan the vehicles, you can either like put the VIN number in or you have to go through all the different vehicles. There's a lot. The only one that I had a problem with so far was a uh, Volkswagen commercial vehicles. Uh and it read the VIN number of the ECU but it would not connect to the ECU of the car, of the van, sorry. It just ignored it entirely. And I don't know if it needed an update. It, was, it wasn't that important at the time, but it's the only one it wouldn't, well, the only one I know of it wouldn't connect to. There might be more. Obviously, I will need to wait until I have jobs to do to try this. But on the wireless one that we had, it had the job of resetting the electric handbrake on a... Uh, Land Rover Freelander, and it could not do it. It almost nearly put the handbrake off, but it couldn't actually follow through. So when I'm doing the brakes now again, I would like to use this and actually try eh, doing things. It does all the same stuff as the other one, where you can make generate a report and email it to you know whoever your 
given it to us, like there's a title one, is that today's date? So there's like today's date and we can put in a workshop information and there's the stall history and there's nothing else wrong with it and it looks all good and all the live data is captured, blah 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 and then you can share it by email or print a PDF off, all that. it's actually quite useful for that because some people say well they want to see what's wrong with their car but this is again, this is aimed at the pro DIY amateurish mechanic level, this isn't your 3000 pound snap on machine, this is still just the sub 500 mark this is just for us folks that like dicking about uh, with cars and maybe you're doing a bit of uh, you know DIY or friendly mechanicering but it's good for a bit of diagnostics a bit of uh, trouble code clearing shh, shh, shh. Quiet. so far so far of the things I've had to do with this that's uh, well as you've seen it's just scanned and cleared as I said I want to test it out with more electronic handbrake stuff because that seems to be what most of my diagnostic machine time is spent doing is setting people's uh, electronic handbrakes but that I'll just need to wait until that happens if you have any comments or questions please leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability but uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for watching because it these kind of videos are the kind of videos that help us buy other stuff for the channel and dick about in the workshop. Anyway, thank you for watching.